Welcome to Thursday Morning Prayer. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Alleluia. For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt and give God the glory. Once again, remember to open your heart with song and praise as the birds trill in the morning to welcome the new day. So may we sing praises to God. But psalms are also songs of praise. And this morning's psalm is the second half of yesterday's. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For God strengthens the bars of your gates. God blesses your children within you. God grants peace within your borders and fills you with the finest of wheat. God sends out God's command to the earth and God's word runs swiftly. God gives snow like wool and scatters frost like ashes. God hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before God's cold? God sends out his word and melts them. God makes the winds blow and the waters flow. God declares God's words to Jacob and statutes and ordinances to Israel. God has not dealt thus with any other nation, and they do not know the Lord's ordinances. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, great builder of the heavenly Jerusalem, you know the number of the stars and call them by name. Heal hearts that are broken. Gather those who have been scattered and enrich us all from the fullness of your eternal wisdom, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I love these psalms that so clearly call out praise and blessing as things like snow and hail. God made it all. And so, living in the great Northeast, one of our pastimes is to complain about winter. And yet, there's beauty in winter. There is grace in it. There's awesome power in winter. It's easy to see how it comes from God. Our scripture reading for this Thursday is from Judges. So we're going back to the Old Testament now. Judges chapter 4, verses 4 through 23. Let us listen for God's word. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinom, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kashan with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh, Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and 10,000 warriors went up behind him, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber the Canaanite, er, sorry, now Heber the Kenite 
had separated from the other Kenites, that is, the descendants of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, and had encamped as far away as Elan Bez Ananim, which is near Kadesh. When Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abinom, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera called out all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, and all the troops who were with him, from Harosheth Hagoim to the Wadi Kishon. Then Deborah said to Barak, Up! For this is the day which the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. The Lord is indeed going out before you. So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 warriors following him. And the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and all his army into a panic before Barak. Sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot, while Barak pursued the chariots and the army to Harosheth Hagoim. All the army of Sisera fell by the sword. No one was left. Now Sisera had fled away on foot to the tent of of Yael, wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between King Jabin of Hazor and the clan of Heber the Kenite. Yael came out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord. Turn aside to me and have no fear. So he turned aside to her into the tent and she covered him with a rug. Then he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. He said to her, Stand at the entrance of the tent, and if anybody anybody comes and asks you, Is anyone here? Say, No. But Yael, wife of Heber, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple until it went down into the ground. He was lying fast asleep from weariness, and he died. Then as Barak came in pursuit of Sisera, Yael went out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you are seeking. So he went into her tent, and there was Sisera lying dead with the tent peg in his temple. So on that day, God subdued King Yabin of Canaan before the Israelites. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last summer, when I did the Women in the Bible preaching series, I did focus a Sunday on Deborah and Yael. Ever since I learned about Yael in seminary, her story has struck me as one that is not actually told from her point of view. How often is it that we change the stories that women have spoken of, of trauma, And not just women, everyone experiences trauma. But so often we sanitize it, we make it nice. Or we turn it so that the person who is experiencing the trauma becomes the perpetrator of trauma. Be careful when reading stories and listening to stories. That we listen with open hearts. We listen with God's ears. What may have been going on here, we will never know the exact truth in this story. But I suspect that there is more to why Yael put that tent stake through Sisera's head than just God ordained it. It is a sobering story when we think about how do we listen to the voices of trauma. And so when we think about new life, think about when someone has experienced something horrific, how can we, through listening and believe them, hearing their own words, help bring them into new life? Let us pray. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. 
Loving God, as the rising sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the power of death in the rising of Jesus Christ, and you bring us all blessings in him. Especially we thank you for the ministry of word and sacrament. We thank you for those who serve and care for others. We thank you for the affection of our friends, for your call to love and serve one another, for the presence and power of your spirit. Hear, O God, our prayers of thanksgiving. Mighty God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal your victory over all that would destroy or harm, and you brighten the lives of all who need you. Especially we pray for the church in the Pacific region. We pray for endangered species of animals and plants. We pray for those who are isolated by sickness or sorrow. We pray for those who suffer mental anguish. And we pray for all who seek the way and truth of Christ. Hear, O oh God, our individual prayers of intercession and concern. Holy God, your love is higher than the heavens and your grace is wider than the sea. Awaken our hearts to the joy of your presence and open our lips to sing your praise. To the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now with the boldness of being one of Christ's disciples and followers, we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us rejoice. Let us serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.